Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton at Art to Life, and I am standing here with Melissa Chandon, the amazing uh, contemporary realist, uh, abstract painter. Um, Melissa, we're, we're talking about edges today, and I thought, what a perfect person to talk to about this, because I think you use edges in your work in a really interesting way. You know, there's these ideas of variations, soft, you know, soft, blurred, you, you use underpainting and everything. So this is one of your paintings. What's this painting called? And this is uh, this painting, this boat painting. Does this have a I title? Think it's six boats. Okay, six boats. <laughs> Um, I try let's try to title them so I'm going to remember. Yeah, okay, all right. So, which one first, is, tell us, tell the audience, what is mm -hmm. this on canvas? It's an acrylic and all that. It's on canvas and it is acrylic on canvas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you handle edges? What do you think about edges? And that's a kind of a big part of your work, especially when you get up close and, and you look at it, because I'm seeing colors coming through on the edges, sort of like T bowed a little bit. There's that neat thing that hap is happening on the edges. Mm -hmm. So for me, once I get the drawing done, there are some edges that are really important to me. And I will use the um, that blue tape that you can just, you know, take off really easily. The oh, you'll you'll t mask. OK, I yeah. Do. OK, so you can see this one's pretty, pretty hard edge. So I do. I will mask some of those off. I'll choose some so it'll be really pretty. Uh, pretty, pretty tight. And, um, and then once that dries and I take that off and then I really start going. I think the important thing for me is making sure that there's never one line, one definitive line. It's always like the, it's all, it's more like the line is implied by the body of color next to it. Like there's really no line here between this white and the orange. It's just this body of color next to this orange Yeah, it's like body. it's a value difference that creates the line. Yeah. But you also have line, but that's true, but then you also have like here, there's a little thin red line along there right. as well. That's the- but It's still dark. Showing through, yeah. and that does form a line. I loved it when I first started um, kind of painting this way. My sister was in love with all the areas where you could see these bits of red. And she calls those the jewels. Uh -huh. And they are, they really are kind of fun. And that they shine and kind of sparkle it, and yeah. show through. And you look at and them everywhere; they're everywhere. They, and that's because you are. you use you use this sort of bright red background when you start painting, right? Yes. That's how you start. There it is, there as well. It's a cadmium red. Okay. And it's a gesso that's been tinted cadmium red. And the guy that builds all my canvases, he delivers them to me. They're all painted, all ready to go. Uh huh. Yeah, but oftentimes, Nicholas, getting back to the line, sometimes I will actually use like a straight edge to make sure that, you know, that I get it. Some of them, it's really important that they're really pretty dead on. Yeah, so I see, that like that's, you used a tool there, but mm -hmm. then you're also just doing it by hand, right? You're just mixing yeah, it Yeah, like you can see, you know, this. It's this so interesting because from a distance, it seems so tight. But when you get up close, like when I'm looking at this, it's really not at all. Like it's, it's really kind of mushy, and, but it holds mushy. together, which I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's great. And and you, you're you choosing the subject matter, but do you handle, uh, like, what if the subject matter is sheep, for example, or, you know, or something that's softer, trees, or you, you tend to graphic, see. you know, you tend to sort of edge things, right? I mean, you're shape, you're, you're Works it's a lot same, about shapes. It's the same principle whether I'm doing a landscape and it's trees, or I'm doing a swimming pool mm -hmm. or a house. It's mm -hmm. the same. I use the same exact technique. Yeah, yeah. And I think that you can create this kind of softness that you would maybe have in a tree by just kind of implying where the line is, um, versus like this hard edge where you can see, yes, that's the edge of the boat. That's the beginning of the water. Yeah, you need those hard lines, then they, I put them in there. I think in order to create something that resembles something that we all know exists in reality, there has to be enough structure to it to hold it together. Otherwise, if it's too loose, it's really, somebody's going to look at it and say that that is not what boats look like when they're floating. They get the distracted water. because it's unsettling. Like this, yeah. yeah, like you're paring down, these are boats, but you don't have oars, you don't have seagulls. It's the colors aren't really how they are in life, but they sort of are. It's an interesting mm -hmm. balance you're walking. I and mean, that's why I even had trouble in the, when I, in the beginning, I was like an, a realistic, realist painter, but no, it's abstracted, but it's also realist. It's a lovely blend of, of both of them. Thank you. 
And, and I yeah. If you could simplify it into a couple things, then I would say, I'm looking at what is light and what is dark, and I'm looking at what is a hard edge and what is a soft edge. Yes. And I'm kind of building this narrative about these juxtaposition between the very light areas, the really dark areas, the really hard areas, the really soft areas. Yeah, yeah. And much like a Monet painting, I mean, it's not that it's not that that far away from mm -hmm. what he did with his beautiful colors and water. Right. I just, I think the juxtapositions the, of just the, the, king, the grays, the, king of all. the grays, and those mm -hmm. saturated colors, and yeah. playing those off off against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. It's great how you describe it and think about it. But I think you're right that there's these areas of softness mm -hmm. and then these areas of sharpness and those are contrasts and these areas of strong dark and strong light, highly saturated, not saturated, thin, and then hard, clean lines. And then you've got these other lines that are a little mushier, but there's all this under color coming through. And right. Yeah. I think the way you use, you use that under color it moves your eye around, you know, the little red jewels or whatever you describe. I think it, it harmonizes yes, it. Yes, yeah. That's a word yeah. that I've heard you use before. Yeah. And I think that that does harmonize it. And you can look at it. And when there's continuity, when there's harmony, when things exist in multiple places, then it, it looks as one, one piece. Yeah, great. Wow, very cool. That's what our brains do is they take all these things that we randomly put together and they make it into one thing. So it's these things, this consistency of hard edges, soft edges, translucent, thicker, that all go together to form this one thing. Yeah. It's all of the things coming together. Right. I call them differences. They mm -hmm. combine it all into this mm -hmm. thing that, and it's your choosing all the differences that then turn it into this. Mm -hmm. And it's your thing because of your selection of those differences. Mm -hmm. Mine would be totally different. Totally and so, different. yeah. 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 Well, sometime let's do a painting together, Nick. Uh, sounds great. <laughs> I'll, I'll challenge you to take over one okay. of mine. All right. We'll make both of our worlds exist. Yes. Okay. One painting. All right. So thanks a lot, you guys. Um, there's some links down below. Uh, Melissa's got an amazing color workshop coming up on in Spain. Uh, she's represented by Caldwell Snyder Gallery, among others. There's some links down there below, and it's got for her upcoming shows. Um, also, please leave a, a comment below about how you uh, handle edges and, and what you think about them and how you can optimize them in your work. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. If you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.